Today I'll be reviewing the EcoFlow Delta Max 2. This portable power station supplies 2400 watts of continuous power with a surge capacity of 4800 watts. The Delta 2 Max comes with a standard 2048 watt hour battery, but what makes this system unique is that it's expandable to two additional smart batteries, which then gives you a total of 6000 watt hours. So each system is equivalent to 2,000 watts a piece that you would put together. Now for those new to the power station game, there's some things here that you probably need to know. You have watts, which is the amount of power that you have available for the appliance, and then you have watt hours, which is the capacity, sort of like the gasoline of a gas generator. As you take away those watts out of the pail, the thing starts to go dead. It's the same thing with the way these work. Now of course there's an efficiency loss as you're converting the DC power to AC power, but those things are taken into consideration as we're doing the tests. As we start to go over the features and the capacities of this system, we're going to go ahead and test it. One thing I like about the EcoFlow's display here is how easy it is to read and understand. Right here on the left hand corner is how many hours of power it has estimated to be left. In the center is kind of the same thing, it gives the percentage of its left. Top right has input watts, which is going to be your input wattage, whether it be from solar, from the wall outlet, or a car. And the bottom right corner is the output wattage going out of the unit. On the top of the smart battery, you have a secret compartment here that you press and you can open up and you'll get access to your cable that combines these two together. As you can see, they're both the same diameter and size, so you're able to stack these very conveniently right here on top. And they do interlock to one another, so they're not going to slide off. It does have a rubbery base at the bottom here that helps hold it in place. Now, as you noticed, I was able to pick that right up and put it on top because this part right here only weighs about 42 pounds, and our bottom section comes in right around 50 pounds. The total dimensions on this is 19 and a half by 9 and a half by 12 inches. So it's not very large and it's fairly easy to move around and put inside your car. Now we're going to go ahead and demonstrate hooking this up to the extra battery port, which we've got a connection cable right here in front, which features two 8 gauge cables and six conductors on the inside for communications. This cable does allow these two units to communicate to one another so that they're able to charge and discharge at a proper rate. On the side here with a nice plastic rubber cover, it has the high amperage jack there, which you can see that we have a pointed edge here, square over here, which makes it pretty foolproof. You just plug that in there like that. And down here on the bottom of the main power station, we have two extra ports. They have rubber caps over top of them to keep the dust and moisture out. And that matches up again with the little square and the triangle and plugs right in. That's all it takes to plug those two in there. Then on the front here, you're going to be able to see exactly what they're doing. Here you can see on the display that it shows that it's attached to another unit, and you can see that also down here on the bottom. The little icon down here at the bottom tells us that it is connected to another battery, and off to the right here gives us the state of charge, whether it's discharging or charging. The battery up on top also has the indicator telling you that it's sensing the battery down below. Now that we have the batteries put together, we might as well as talk about what kind of technology they're using. These use lithium phosphate batteries, which has got a longer lifespan than lithium ion, and it can be recharged up to 3,000 times before it starts to lose capacity. Those 3,000 times comes in about 8.2 years or up to 10 years in general is what the manual states. That would come out to 8.2 years. That's using it every day, cycling it from full all the way to completely empty. Since we're talking about the lifespan of the battery, we might as well talk about the warranty that backs this unit. EcoFlow's warranty is one of the industry's best at five years of warranty time. All you have to do is register the unit at their website. Should you have any problems, you can feel comfortable that EcoFlow is going to take good care of you. Now's a good time to go ahead and fill you in on a few other things about the EcoFlow that I'm discussing here now. This was provided to me at no cost. However, I'm not being paid to do the review. And when we signed our letter of agreement that I had the right to give my fair and honest opinion. So even though this was provided to me, I'm under no obligation to not tell the truth. And because I feel as though my reputation needs to be upheld, I guarantee you that if I find something wrong or I don't like it, I'm going to let that be known. In addition to the links down below, it's worth mentioning that EcoFlow is having some of the biggest sales of the season right now over Black Friday. 
Right now, you can save up to 58% off the normal cost. And down in the bottom, there'll also be a promo code that'll get you even extra money off in addition to the normal price that they have on sale. It's also worth mentioning that if this isn't a large enough unit, you can check out the EcoFlow Delta Pro, which has 3,600 watts of continuous power with a peak power of 7,200 watts. And the standard battery starts out at 3,600 watt hours and is expandable up to a whopping 25,000 watt hours. The Delta Pro is right now at $1,200 off which is normally about $3,700 and right now is on sale for about $2,499, possibly lower depending on the discount code below. The Delta Pro Series has a total of five in their lineup. You have the original Delta, the Delta Max, the Delta 2, the Delta 2 Max, and then the Delta Pro. So be sure to pay close attention to which model that you're looking at so that if you think you're getting a better deal that you're not buying the older model. And EcoFlow is going to be adding one more model to the list that's going to blow the top off of the industry. It's called the Delta Pro Ultra. This unit starts out at 6,000 watt hours and is expandable to 90,000 watt hours, which is just absolutely crazy. This is designed to run your whole house with a whole house transfer switch. It's gonna come out sometime in February of 2024. On the front, on the left-hand side here, we have USB-A connections that are rated at 12 watts. The fast charges on the right are rated at 18 watts. And down at the bottom, we have USB-Cs that are rated at 100 watts. Now on the back side of it, we have a total of 620 volt outlets. And this is one of the few power stations that actually puts out 120 volts. Most of them that I've been reviewing have been right around 110 volts. Now, according to the manual, these are rated at 15 amps, but if you was to take 2,400 watts and divide it by 120 volts, that comes out to be in 20. Generally, this is a 20 amp plug which like I said, I can only go by what the manual says, which is 15 amps. Down here at the bottom, we have the car plug, which is regulated at 12.6 volts and the DC 5521 outputs, which are only rated at three amps. Now up here at top, we have charging ports for your solar or your car charging. These have the ability to take anywhere from 11 to 60 volts DC and 15 amps max per port. And then in the center here, we have our 120 volt outlet, which as you may expect, it does come with the cord and there is no charging blocks. And it comes with the car charger port here also, which also, like I said, plugs right into the PV2 port. Now these two ports that we have right here in the back are XT60 connectors, which we have one that's included with the car plug already on it. However, this is gonna take quite a long time to recharge it because the maximum wattage this is gonna charge at is 100 watts per plug when it's coming off of the car because of the amperage that's limited on the plug. So you're gonna have quite a few hours involved there because if you do 100 divided in or even 200 divided into the 2400, that's gonna come in somewhere around 12 hours total if you're going in at 200 watts or 24 hours if you're going at 100 watts. So to say the least, going off of the car port is not gonna be very quick, but it is there. Moving off to the side here is the high voltage resettable breaker and directly above it up here at the top is where you select the charge rate speed. When you have it all the way to one side, it charges at full capacity, which they rated it up to 1800 watts, which allows this to charge in about an hour to an hour and a quarter from completely dead or they also rate it at 80% in as little as 40 some minutes. When you move it over to the other side, you're able to adjust the charge rate in the app. What I really liked about this app here was it was so simple to use. You've got a combination of your input and output watts. You have the watts coming out of the different ports and they got the readout right there in the middle. You can turn your AC on and off by hitting that port right here and it kicks right on. It's very responsive. If you slide down to your 12 volt or your USB, you can turn them on, turn them off. Now this app will be good anytime it's on the internet, so you can control it from anywhere in the world that has internet service. You're able to set up your profiles. And as I said here, the Black Friday sale is at 58% off. You can also do updates. One of the updates that I just did the other day allows this now to go from 30 microseconds to 20 microseconds. Now this does offer pass-through charging and battery backup. When you plug this device into the wall and it passes right through the outlet here, you're not draining from the battery. If you do lose power, this has a 20 microsecond changeover now, whereas before it was 30 microseconds. We're gonna be testing that with the computer to see whether or not the computer drops out. So stand by for that. Now this device does work off of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth both. So you're able to do either or depending on where you're at. So you're able to connect either way. In the screen here, you can see what your extra battery is coming in at. It also has the temperature and Fahrenheit. When you go under settings here, you can name your unit. You can turn the beep function on and off. Under the energy management system here, you can decide how far you want the unit to discharge and how far you would like it to charge. 
So if you wanted to limit it at 80%, you can slide it right to there, and you can do the same thing with the discharge. You can take it all the way to zero, and you could raise it at highest 30%. It also has the feature of backup reserve, which allows you to save power for later, which is a pretty neat feature. Under the AC charging speed, as I said, this also has the ability to integrate with the smart generator, so it turns on and off depending on what percentage you want it to charge to and shut off at. Now, the EcoFlow does have a feature called X-Boost. You're gonna use this when you're using a resistive load where it doesn't really matter if the voltage drops a little bit. Say you have an appliance that's just a little bit over the wattage this is capable of. What it will do is it'll reduce the output voltage out of the outlets of the back of the unit, which then in turn lowers the wattage that it's gonna provide. That works fine for things like hair dryers and electric heaters, but you might have problems with electronic devices. You also have timers here where you can turn it on and off, which is fairly nice. You got firmware updates, lab features, everything in here is pretty self-explanatory and has a lot of nice features like I said. This is probably one of the best ones I've seen. It booted right up right away and it was very easy to understand. There really is not much of a manual, so the manual that you get for this is very simplistic. So you've got this big thick manual, but it's because there's so many languages in there. So you've got your safeties here in the front, you have your specs here and here, and you're immediately on to another language. That is the manual for the power station, and the smart battery app is pretty much exactly the same thing. You've got some safety precautions in the front, your specifications here, and immediately goes on to another language. They do include a quick guide, which makes it a little bit easier to understand things, but they break it down pretty simplistic right here because let's face it, this is basically providing you the 120 volt outlet that you take for granted every day when you have power. And this pretty much just shows you exactly what you've gotten in the box, blah, 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 there you go. And if you choose to use third party solar panels instead of theirs, they do give you some instructions of what to check for so that you don't accidentally damage your power station. For our next test, we're gonna go ahead and plug in some resistive heat. We've got our meter going right here, which we have 120 volts. We have a perfect sine wave, which means this thing is a pure sine wave. We have a perfect 60 Hertz, so looking really good. To verify that we have everything plugged in on the back, which is obvious to see there, and you're gonna notice that here right on the front of it. Right now we have everything turned off. But what you see is you have the top one charging the bottom one. We have 76 watts going out and we have 76 watts coming in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn on the load and we're gonna watch our meters to see if we have much of a drop. So the first heater here is gonna pull right around 1300 watts. Our oscilloscope shows a perfect sine wave still and we're right at 120 to 121 volts. Jumping down here to the bottom, we've got 1360 to 1400. Both of them are feeding at the same rate, so you got 690 here, 690 or so there. Now let's go ahead and add a little extra load to it. Right here you can see we're at 2400 watts, or just shy of it. And let's go ahead and look at our app here. I'm gonna show you what the X Boost does. Right now we're running 109 volts. We still have a really clean sine wave. It's holding right in at 60.0 hertz. Like I said though, we have a 10 volt drop. By dropping that voltage 10 volts, it allowed it to keep it underneath the 2400 watts. If you have a load that's over the 2400 mark and it's resistive, it will actually lower the voltage, which then lowers the wattage output. Let's go into the app. Let's go into our settings. Let's go down here to X Boost, which we have X Boost right there. When we turn this X Boost off, you're gonna hear the speed of the fan down below increase and the voltage is gonna increase as well. Here we go. And then we're gonna check the wattage going out. You can see that right here. You heard the increase. The wattage has already jumped to 2750. We're right back to where we started at at 120.7. Sine wave looks beautiful and she's sustaining that load. I did this test a little earlier, but we're gonna go ahead and let it run and I'm gonna show you what happens when it goes into overload. This has overload, overheat, low temperature, high temperature, you name it, it has protection for all the different scenarios. As I said, we're at 2700 watts. Let's just give it a little while. As you can see, it was rated originally for 2400. They're generous with their ratings. All right, it finally tripped out on overload and it went back to charging itself up from the top battery. As we can see there, the frequency's dead, voltage is dead, it's completely isolated. Now, if we go in here and put it back to that X boost, it will lower that voltage again and it will return to powering the load. 
There you go, it's dropped back down. All I did was hit the button on the back of it that turned on the outlets and everything is back to the way it was originally. So that shows you that the unit does put out 2400 plus watts. It's not cheating the specs. They give you actually 2700 watts for, what, about a minute or two originally. So we're looking really good. Let's go ahead and check out the USB section here. And because we're under this extreme load right now, we're gonna be able to test out the fans. So you would think with us running this for at least, this was recorded once before, but the audio got screwed up. So this thing's been running like this probably for a good 10 minutes now, 15 minutes prior to having to re-record it. But we're gonna go ahead and stop the loads down there by hitting the power button on the back. We're gonna go ahead and turn on our SPL meter, sound pressure level. I don't even hear the fans running. It's at 38 dB. Now when it's charging, it will speed up a little bit. Um, this thing is really built efficient and uh, very well from what I see. So that takes care of the noise. Can you sleep with this beside your bed? Yeah, not a problem. All right, as you can see right now, we have no input coming in or output. The unit is just sitting there in standby. We're gonna go ahead and plug in the power. It's gonna start charging. And then we're gonna power up the laptop that does not have a battery in it. And then we'll unplug it from the wall and see if the computer drops out. Now you're gonna see the input wattage here in a second, start kicking on. It's giving you the rotating fan right there that tells you that it's starting to turn on the fans. And depending on where my switch is set at, it's either gonna charge at whatever I've picked, which is about 900 watts, or it's gonna to go to possibly as much as 1800. What's nice about this is you can select exactly what charge rate you want. So if you've got all day and you don't need to use it for a few days, you could set it down to you know a couple hundred watts and slowly recharge it, which is gonna get you more lifetime out of your battery. All right, computer's starting to boot up. We can see that it's starting to draw 22 watts area. As you're able to see here, the computer is powered up. You can see that it is pulling 20 watt area and it's coming in at 900. So that tells you that it's plugged into the wall. It's sending power out. We're gonna go ahead and unplug it from the wall and see if the computer happens to lose its display. There's the splash screen. Let's go ahead and unplug it from the back. You're gonna see the top number of charge rate is gonna to diminish to nothing. Instantly switched over and it still kept the laptop going. And to prove that you know the laptop is actually plugged in, all we gotta do is unplug the back and she goes dead just like that. So 20 microseconds is how fast it's able to switch over. That right there is an example of pass-through charging. When the wall outlet is powering the unit, it's going through a relay state and right onto the load. The relay switches to auxiliary power when this is unplugged, and that's what we're calling by automatic switchover. Now let's go ahead and test out the DC, and then we're gonna start wrapping this up. To test the 100 watt output here, a typical load bank is not going to work. Unfortunately, the only thing that I've got that's going to work good on that is using an actual USB digital tester and my MacBook Pro here. The MacBook has a 100 watt capacity of charging, which is going to test this out perfect. So we'll go ahead and plug it into the computer, plug in the USB-C after turning it on. All right, they have recessed this plug back and my USB-C will not reach in there, so I cannot read it on that one. We're gonna go ahead and plug it directly into the computer. And we can see that the computer is currently at about 18% battery life. And we are charging right there at 96 watts. Go ahead and test it over here on the other one. And it's right at 98, 99 watts. So we know that it is capable of doing 100 watts. Like I said, you've gotta have an actual PD uh, type device that actually is talking the communications through there you'd be surprised what kind of information is going on in there. At this time, we're using the USB-A that's rated for 12 watts. As you can see right here, we have 12 watts. And down below here on the load, it actually says we have 10. We can increase that to 12. Let's go to 11, which these are small increments. We got 13 there. And then we'll go up to 12 watts. 12 watts is about right where it cuts out at. So it's, it's right at what they're saying. According to this right here, I'm at 12.2 watts on the digital readout. We're at 11 here, we're, we're splitting hairs. It says 13 there, uh, it's putting 2.4 amps. I mean, it's rated for about that same amount right there. Uh, like I said, we're doing it at five volts. Now let's go ahead and jump it over to the high speed. This one here was rated for 18. We're gonna go ahead and increase it a little higher. Let's go up to 12. We're at 4.4 volts. It says 5.9 over here. You can see there's a voltage drop between here and there in my cable, which is about six foot long. 
it claims it's rated for 100 watts. As you can see, that doesn't always hold true, which is why we're doing our tests here. There's 13 watts. We have 16 up here. We have 15 here. Like I said, because of the uh, voltage drop, we're having a wattage drop. So this right here is gonna be your accurate one right there. Going up there already, there's 18 watts. Down here it says 16, so we're between 16 and 18. We're pulling 3.2 amps, so we know that it is producing more amperage than traditional. And boom, she dropped out right there at the next one up. It produces exactly what they rate it for. Now for this next test, I'm gonna use a device like this right here, which is a kilowatt. If you're wanting to know how many watts you need and you really don't have all these fancy meters, you can buy one of these for about 20 bucks or less. There's some that are 30, some that are 15. The one you're gonna see in the video I got for like 12 and it's just as accurate as what this one is here. This is a kilowatt P3. These have been around forever. Doesn't have a backlit display, which is why I went with the other one. And the test that you're gonna see next is this 1360 watt heater ran until the system went completely dead. We're gonna find out how many watt hours the battery came in at. It's rated at two kilowatt hours and some change. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. What we've done is we've completely recharged the system and we're gonna run this completely down to make sure the kilowatt reading is actually accurate. You can see that we're actually pulling the 1,346 watts, 1,331, so we're within nine watts, 10 watts of it. So we've just ran the battery completely down the total kilowatt hours out of both battery packs here was 3.633 kilowatt hours. So we're gonna go ahead and do the math here and we'll calculate out the efficiency of the dual battery system. One of the cooling fans just came on. It's probably the quietest fan I've heard yet. I don't think even the quietest sleeper would notice that. But as I mentioned, as we start to bring our percentage back up a little higher we're starting to input our wattage a little bit higher so it is trying to slowly add the wattage to the battery slowly and not overcharge the battery or shock it so you can tell we have some intelligent charging capabilities in the machine and as I mentioned earlier it is bringing that wattage up higher the fan just speeded up a little bit faster and now our top battery is starting to charge too at 530 and continually rising. So grand total input wattage, we're at 1600. The battery's charging at 550. The top's charging also at 550. And we've got about two hours of recharge time there on the bottom and a total of about three hours on the top battery. Well, there you have it. That is a full test of the EcoFlow Delta II Max. I did not test out the 10 amp socket on the back because when I was doing my initial testing, I did short a couple of the pins together and I damaged the unit somehow, which the factory is going to send me another one. No questions asked. I told them exactly what happened. Generally, that wouldn't cause an issue, but in this case here, it did. It's electronic circuit. Sometimes you don't know which part's going to fail. Not a big deal. Like I said, five year warranty. You got some problems. Nothing's perfect. But for the most part, everything I've seen on this, it's very clean. It's really well laid out. It's simplistic and it's easy to use. I mean, let's really think about it. It's a wall outlet in the middle of a field if you want it. It gives you clean power, which is actually cleaner than what you get from the utility company. And it's regulated. So it's gonna protect you against spikes and surges and all those nasty things like that. Overall, so far, this is probably one of the nicest units that I've reviewed. I've always heard EcoFlow is a pretty good unit. Other than that one problem, like I said, that had uh, caused a short to damage the 10 amp receptacle on the back, the car port, that's it. Uh, I have overloaded the other ports, no problem, and we didn't have any issues after that. So it reset and everything worked fine. Once again, let me remind you, we do have links down in the bottom. Black Friday is tomorrow, which will be the time you're actually watching this, and it'll be months and years after the fact that you'll see this but the website links are gonna be down below. If you guys enjoyed the video and you got something out of it, if you would, hit the like button. Consider subscribing. Like I said, I do heating, air conditioning, refrigeration, and home standby generators, and all kinds of things in between there. So this just happens to be one of those things that I kind of enjoy doing, and I like having the equipment on standby if I have any issues, which is the whole reason why people are buying them. That's gonna wrap everything up for me, guys. Once again, leave a comment down below. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video, and until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.